Professor Abdurrahman Nimri. He's the uh, professor in pediatric, uh, King Saud University, consultant neonatologist. And he is going to talk about blue baby with a normal heart and lung parenchyma and Viagra. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Dr. Professor uh, Nimri, and the floor for you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, Dr. Ahmed. Thanks for the organizing committee for this invitation, and uh, thank for you as a participant. And uh, I can screen the participant is a mixture of pediatrician, primary care, even there is a senior consultant neurologist. And I have to apologize for them that my presentation was made just for the uh, junior and for the general uh, pediatrician and primary care handling this uh, premature PV. I will just give me time to share my slides. Is it clear, Dr. Ahmed? Yeah, yeah, clear. <clears throat> Thank you. Sorry. Uh, I apologize to show you my face because I'm having very bad internet connection in the border of Saudi Arabia and the Montague Jazan Iran. So my talk about uh, uh, an experience when the times we were uh, doing my locum in the south part of Saudi Arabia, uh, merely in the uh, Khamis Mashed, we had uh, faced uh, this cases of such scenario uh, is a full-term baby born to 26 years old mother, uh, gravid three uh, by cesarean section, and the baby cry immediately. Had a good upgirl score, uh, make the mother happy, make everybody happy. Went to the postnatal ward as the usual normal nursery, roaming with the mother, and with the first two feeding, the baby start to be blue. And uh, this is scary, scary for the mother, scary for the nurses, scary for the doctors. Uh, and uh, good thing that the baby was blue and happy, not associated with any respiratory distress, no signs of sepsis, temperatures and stabilities. All vital signs was okay, except that his saturation is only in the 80s. Uh, with the assessment by our uh, can, uh, resident or, or the fellows, uh, the child looks okay, and the first thought that maybe this is an aspiration pneumonia, or maybe a congenital pneumonia, or maybe there is a possibility of congenital heart disease. So the usual thing, they did the septic workup, they start the baby on antibiotic, and this is the X-ray, and the X-ray was very strange that uh, it looks very normal lung, a normal heart, at least shape, and and. And, and we don't know, maybe there is some underlying congenital heart disease. And when you have a blue baby like this, who is cyanos, but not in respect to distress, uh, uh, it may think about maybe this is a right uh, ventricle outflow obstruction, like pulmonary atresia, tricuspid atresia. So the, immediately we had uh, called the cardiology consultation. Our cardiologist came and, in, uh, and, and scanned the babies with the echocardiogram. And, uh, Fortunately, that he has a normal structure, a normal right ventricle, normal outlet, but he has a very bad high pressure in the pulmonary area by the finding of the caspitary gauge, uh, right ventricle dilatation, and right to left shunt through the ductus arteriosus, and also from the foramen uh, oval. So then they label him as this is uh, a pulmonary uh, hypertension which he has no abnormality in the lung. Usually we see severe pulmonary hypertension when we have uh, underlying lung pathology, like a meconium, like GBS pneumonia, or maybe they get aspirated, or he has a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, I will tell you how we manage him, but subsequently we start to have several cases, almost 10 cases came with the same uh, scenario. And uh, when you look and scan these cases, we find four of them, they are Down syndrome, four of them, they are infant with diabetic mothers, uh, maybe one or two, she has some other pathology, was not related to the heart, but maybe it is associated. Uh, and majority of them, they presented the same, just the sad, hypoxia. And when we did their uh, blood gases, we found there is a, um, a metabolic or mild metabolic acidosis with a BH7.21 uh, and bicarb is minus 15 and above. 
the almost of them they, when, they, when they examine them you will find that it has a very loud uh, second heart sound and the loud second heart sound sometimes indicating that this is maybe uh, a cases of pulmonary hypertension so how we manage them we, we we start one by one they start to admit the patient to in icu and in icu usually when we start to treat such a cases we have to intubate them and we have to start them in magnesium uh, sulfate or in center where there is a nitric oxide available you can just go ahead uh, unfortunately this baby was not uh, sick enough to be intubated and we don't have that uh, uh, nitric oxide uh, cylinders in the south and at that time it was in the in the 90s uh, no sorry in 2006 7 8 this is the time where i spent my my look on there in in, in Khamis Mashed, uh, military hospital so we start them on sydney pier which is the piagra and uh, fortunately the baby had improved dramatically start to win from the oxygen Saturation start to improve, and a couple of weeks we discharge the baby on the maintenance doses of a small Sydney pill, and then with the times we gradually we wind them down. So this is the baby, such a baby when they born to you, and they start to be blue. You think about congenital heart disease. You get the cardiology consultation. You scan them, and you find that they has a normal uh, cardiac structures. Uh, there is no elements of any right ventricle outflow obstruction. There is no elements of pulmonary structure or pulmonary hypertension in in the in the from the penis side. So I think this is maybe arterial pulmonary hypertension. And arterial pulmonary hypertension, either it is something primary called primary or something called secondary. Secondary usually to underlying lung pathology. Uh, primary is it from the structures? Is it from the high attitude? Is it from uh, failures of the transition from the intrapulmonary high pulmonary vascular resistance to the postnatal? We don't know. And, and and it comes to to the treatment. Why we choose sildenafil? Why we choose Viagra? We choose Viagra because this is the main uh, action of the Viagra. It inhibits the degradation of cyclic GMB, which is responsible for the uh, calcium uh, influx and stopping the calcium influx to the pulmonary vascular walls and then you get pulmonary vasodilatation and this is the role of Viagra just pulmonary vasodilatation in in both uh, uses so we have to know that uh, still until now uh, there is a caution in using Viagra in uh, small children but with the time we start to build up our experience it is very safe and can be used for those cases of primary pulmonary hypertension and i think our colleague from the pulmonary side this is the drug of choice for them to use it in a cochrane database and when we look for the evidence most of them they said it is safe and there is no major side effect and it may be considered as a first line of treatment when there is no inhaled nitric oxide or there is no facility to treat such uh, pulmonary hypertension this is the chronic review cochrane review that is indicating that it can be used and it is safe to be used there is no much major side effect we collected all these cases we call them as a black lung resistance pulmonary hypertension and black lung because usually they have a normal lung maybe i add uh, to i need to add this cardiac anomaly but the people just said no pulmonary uh, hypertension is a cardiac related or maybe related to the pulmonary vasculatures so we call it black lung resistant pulmonary hypertension and we publish it in saudi medical journal 2017. Uh, the the Sydney field side effect and I don't have that much of of really when, with these cases uh, except maybe lower blood pressure transient it was transient the dose was used is only 0 0.2 to 0.3 milligram per kilograms uh, uh, there will be resistant uh, very uh, prebism and that's a well known uh, side effect or well known action for the uh, Viagra. Uh, is it related to the high attitude where we are in Hamis Mishet, we are uh, 3,000 maybe uh, pitch above the sea levels? Uh, maybe, and there is some evidence uh, and some literature review. There is some association between high attitudes and the development of pulmonary hypertension, especially primary pulmonary hypertension, or failure of the transition from the intra uh, uterine pulmonary vascular resistance to the bosnit. Uh, period 
uh, and this is what we call it idiopathic uh, pulmonary hypertension. It can occur in the absence of any brain common lung disease. Uh, and you don't know what is the pathophysiology under that, but maybe it's a normal muscularization of the pulmonary uh, arterioles. Uh, the classical uh, neonatal VBHN, as I told you, that it is associated with underlying uh, lung pathology, and maybe you will have a high right uh, side ventricle pressure, right side pulmonary pressure, and right to left shunt through the ductus arteriosus or the foramen of valve, associated with some depression on the myocardial dysfunction, which they need some inotrope support. And if we look to such cases, this is just need to have a high uh, center, high tertiary center, usually cannot be handled by general pediatric center or a primary care center, like in a pulmonary hypertension, which is present in, 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 in sometimes you may face it. Uh, if you face it, you have to call your colleague from the cardiology. You need to rule out cardiac uh, anomalies. And once you have ruled out cardiac anomaly and end up to, to label this baby as, as uh, uh, just primary pulmonary hypertension, I think it is safe to consult your colleague from cardiology for pulmonary and start uh, sidenafil. And in sidenafil, you have to start it with the caution. In some cases, when they have some uh, liver impairment because the elimination of this uh, sidenafil is through the uh, liver. Uh, I make it very short, very simple for you to understand how we can handle a baby with the uh, cyanosis. Meanwhile, he is free from any cardiac and lung disease. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Dr. Ahmed. And the floor is open for you for any question. Thanks a lot, uh, really, Prof, for really a nice case. Um, if the uh, floor, they allow me just to put one question for you. Um, if I'm not wrong, this lady, she had a cesarean section. Uh, was it emergency or an elective? You said she was a full term. Was it yeah, high it risk? Elective, 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 elective section. Yeah, and uh, yes, you agree with you. Those who don't come to 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 have uh, cesarean section without labor, cesarean section with no labor. This is elective. They are more prone to have some respiratory morbidities, especially the transient tachypnea of newborn. And that transient tachypnea of newborn, sometimes it is malignant, malignant transient the kidney of Nippon, which may lead to pulmonary hypertension. I agree with you, but that's what yeah. is elective. The other cases was not by emergency section, and there is a variety. Maybe I, I missed to, to, to tell you that maybe 40% are in both cesarean section, 60% still normal for fixed vaginal delivery. But right. it's not related to the to the mood of delivery, although it is well known that as a obstetrician, when you have elective cesarean section with no laboring. Yeah. The, the uterine is not contracting. These people are more prone to have respiratory morbidity. Okay, now Thank you. <clears throat> the floor for the audience, if you have any remarks um, for Prof, please, if you do have any questions before we close. Okay, thanks a lot, Prof Abdurrahman, for very yeah, nice, you, really, very good case. Shukran. It's a very good I case say, for I us. Say, I say one word for the organizing of this symposium. I'm really uh, proud to be a member of this symposium. Uh, Rahimallah Al Fuad, uh, which is the founder of Al Fuad Company, uh, we had the chance to work with him. Uh, Allah Okay, uh, dear uh, guests. And I think we will close for this uh, morning session. And we will, inshallah, we'll hit for the, uh, we'll have the break uh, for the prior time, Jum'ah. Do'u lana ma'akum, inshallah, Rabbana tqabbal minna wa minkum, inshallah. Wa unbarik al-ba'dana, inshallah, fi wakdum inshar al-fadil, inshar al-Ramadan. Just a reminder, uh, we'll uh, start our uh, afternoon session at 2 p.m. And for tomorrow's session, uh, we're going to start at 9. Please, uh, and thanks a lot. And shukran lakum jamia. Jazakum Allah khair.